I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. David said, I was glad. But he said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Praise God. I appreciate it. The Lord today appreciate His goodness. Amen. Thank God for His mercy. And the Bible said His mercy endures forever. You know, you just come to think about it. Amen. Went for God's mercy, none of us be here today. Amen. God had to give us grace, so don't grumble when God gives somebody else grace. Just thank Amen. God He gave you something. Amen. 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 You know, you, you see God enduring with somebody. A lot of times people get the wrong attitude because uh, uh, maybe he, he's got a real current in his life. Maybe he has a struggle with something. But you know what? The love of God's right in our heart. No matter how much a person has a struggle, I mean, God wants us to try to help him. God wants us to try to help him. If, if this patient comes out, that's his business. He's God. And we're not supposed to let ours run out. Amen. I thought about Moses. How Moses, how Moses, God said, just get out of the way. I'm going to destroy him. He was fed up with the children of Israel. They got him rough. He said, I'll raise up a seed after you. I'm going to get rid of this bunch. And Moses stepped out before God and said, God, if you're going to destroy them, destroy me too. With them. And you know what that did? That moved God. That love that Moses had for them people move God to change his mind. Wouldn't you rather move God to change his mind than telling God, I don't blame you? That's a little far fetched, see, because our day might be tomorrow. Amen. Come on. That's, we may run into a stump tomorrow. Amen. It may be them today. God is God, and anything God does is always righteous. Amen. So he's going to take care of the end there. He, he's going he's to balance it out. He's going to do righteous. Whatever it is, God's a righteous God, and he can't be nothing else. Amen. He's been angry a few times, but he's a righteous God. In fact, the Bible says God's angry with the wicked every day. But you know, he'd be angry with the wicked and love us. That's, that's God. He ain't getting mad at the whole bunch. Everybody starts running for the hill. I'm sure there has been a time that folks fell like that. And God was angry. Praise God. They just started running for the hill. Trying to get away. Not only in the judgment, you know, that's what you're going to do. Run and cry. It rocks. You know, the thing about it is, these people are going to know it's folks. That's, that's the bad part. These folks is running is going to know it's too late. And when you know it's too late, you'll never be saved now. You're lost forever. But you're still running around. You're still hollering. You're still seeing. But you know it's over. Get hold of God. All them times that you, you could have prayed. All them times you could have straightened things out. Just old stubborn, rebellious flesh. Didn't you? And I'll tell you what. There is a thing called humbling yourself. Just getting down on your knees and humbling yourself. And just shut your mouth. Just close your mouth. Just bite your tongue if you have to. But stuff something down your throat. And yeah, you're going to hush. Take a voice rag with it and stuff it down your throat. Just hold one end in your hand. Keep swallowing in the middle. But you know, sometimes you just got to humble yourself. Amen. Just, just, just humble yourself. Maybe you didn't. Maybe it ain't your fault. But still, if you don't humble yourself, it's going to escalate into something. Take the low side. Take the low side. Take the low side. You don't want to do that. Take the low side. And humble yourself. Praise God. Give it to God and come out. Praise God. Not have to go through that same old cycle, falling out, cussing, going through this, 
when you, you know, we, we're supposed to learn. You heard those saying, living and learning. Yeah. We're supposed to learn the tricks of the devil. Yeah. And how he uses the same old tricks on us. We look back and say, well, they've done it again. He got me again. Same old trick. Same old trick when you should learn. We should learn the devil's tricks. Amen. And by learning the devil's tricks, we can head him off. Not keep getting in the same ball hole. How many ever gotten in the same ball hole more than one? I'm talking about even in the night, you get stuck. You got to get somebody to pull you out. And you come right back and think it this time. I can get to it this time. Mm, and you go back in again. Well, oh. Then you get, you get, you get, you get in your mind. You ain't gonna whoop me. Now you try it the third time. You're back in there. After a while, folks get tired. You call it. But if you go back in the hole again, don't you call me? At two o'clock in the morning, you slip up and you see that hole. Don't run back in it no more. And there we go, trying to prove something. Well, the same thing spiritually. You just stay out of the hole. Don't even get close to it. Amen. 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 I said, don't even get close to it. And you can't get in. And then those that take you back in. That same old slick hole, same old mud hole. Praise God to do the same old damage. Yeah. Amen. I said to do the same. If you have your Bibles with me today, turn with us. In the Word of God, Second Timothy. I appreciate your camp meeting. But the Lord is helping us. And I saw last Wednesday, I saw after the service last Wednesday night, I saw people just jammed. I saw the shoulder to shoulder. Where it was, the shoulder to shoulder. And something would happen. The Holy Ghost like it just weaved it. Weaving in the Holy Ghost. I believe we're at the door. God's going to help us again. And one thing about it, God's going to help us. <laughs> We've had it. But He will help us. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he said, Call on me, and I'll answer you. Call on me, and I'll answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things. That you know not of. God's got things up his sleeve that we don't know exist. And he can come out with it to lock the devil, devil's jaw. Amen. Put him down, put him out. Amen. Hallelujah. We're sitting there all frail and feeling no hope. Is bam, bam. You know, I saw this vision once. Now I'm telling you, God is so much stronger than the devil. Until it ain't no comparison. Man, God is so much stronger than the devil. I just ran back and watched God, how powerful he was. The devil didn't stand a chance. And God got weapons. I saw some weapons. And God showed it to me physically. God got some weapons. Weapons are so powerful. And the devil didn't stand one bit of chance. I mean, it was just, it was just total. Wasn't even a battle. When the Lord finally stood up, he wasn't even a fight. There wasn't no tip tat, it was just bam, bam, it was over. It, it was over so fast. That fight was over so fast. It's just like it never began. Man, there was a shooting. This, these things will shoot. God just showed me how much more power. You know, we go through the battles and battles and battles, and we don't realize the one we serve is, 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 is supreme over the universe. Yeah. Everything that is, He's more. Hey. Everything that He is, is more. The Bible even said, His name is above every name. Yeah. Ain't a name. Hey. Hallelujah. 
say the name above his name. His name is above every other name. His power is above every power. And if his power not ordained, I was at a created evil for its day. Be no power that God didn't ordain. And they were over the head and they were shooting. And I was watching this thing. He didn't even shoot me. Like there was over that, and then that tree line behind the tent. Over there, they was, they was shooting, shooting. And I saw these weapons. I know it was on our side. The Lord was on this side. It was just like there was a shooting, shooting, shooting. And all at once, all at once, them weapons just rose up. Shit! It was over <laughs> And it was so quick, so fast, and so powerful. It was over, folks. The battle was over. God was so much superior over them that there wasn't no battle. And I think that's the way it is when God stands up. It's over so quick. Don't you think you wonder why the devil went? Man, God was showing me how much more stronger. You know, the Bible said the, the weapons of our warfare are not come. But the mighty of God. We got power. He gave us power because the reason we got power, he gave us power. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have no power if he hadn't give us power. But he said, Behold, I give unto you power. Tread on serpents and scorpions. When you can walk on your enemy, that means you're superior. God has made us superior over our enemy. You tread on serpents. Said you. Behold, I give unto you power over all the power. Nothing by any means. I'd be able to hurt you or harm you. You tread on serpents. Praise God. You walk on them. He said, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. In other words, the power of God, the Holy Ghost, is a greater power than all that that the enemy has. But you know, a lot of times we, we, in our faith, we're not there. It's like when the COVID comes, people start running to the hill. He knew what he told us. We knew this scripture. Before COVID come, we had the answer. He said, Behold, I give on you power of all the power. That's what he told us. But when the trial and the test come, folk fell apart. But it still don't make God any less a God than He is. He's still God and He's still written. He can still read. He still means it. What we have to do is come up to that level of faith that we can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That we won't run to the hill. That we can present ourselves. He told him. He told him, he said, you ain't going to have to fight. Just go out there and present yourself. I'm going to do the fight. And you got to have faith to go out there without weapon. Stand before your enemy without something to fight with. I'm just, some of them probably say, I ain't, man, I ain't going, I ain't no fool. I ain't standing out there and get myself killed. Don't that sound like some of us? I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to get myself killed. I ain't going to catch that stuff. I ain't going to do this. And God took and said, I'll give you power. Yeah. You know, somewhere in the church is going to come up to that level of faith. Yeah. And we ain't going to doubt God. We're going to have faith. That's if John G. Lake, that black player, 
was killing folks in Africa. And they had a, over here in this country, folk, folk in Washington, they had, they had a, had to come back from Africa, they had a heated room in their church. And if you come from something wrong with it, they put you in a chair and prayed for you, went to x-ray they sent you to the x-ray room. See what was gone. If it wasn't gone, you come back to the healing chair. Then that stuff like that moves gone. Yeah. So that was years ago, but this this generation is it's like it lost that level of faith that sits here. They said they had a one hundred thousand x-ray documented miracles. Where it was sad, and now it's gone. They put him in a healing chair. Prayed on him. X-rayed that breath. Laid him out. And give God the glory because it wasn't that. That's what I'm talking about. I said, that's what I'm talking about. Can you say amen? Now the evidence. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Can you say that? Praise God. And he had that black plant was killing him. Killed me. And said he had to put it in his hand. Put that plant, that germ in his hand. And they helped the microscope. He said, I'm going to show over the microscope. And they held the microscope on that plague and said, just get them away. And he said, ah, you have no power against John Blake. It had no power against that man of God. Because he believed. He believed he was going to die. Now he's going to die. You're going to die. Say, you're the one going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm going to live because I've got life in me. That's something we live. There's a greater power than what you are. And we've got to come to this place until our faith. Then we can be sons of God. Then we can see the glory of God. Then we can see the power and the manifestation of Jesus Christ. And there be no enemy. That would be able to stand before us. I believe. I believe. Put that black plate in that man's hand. And it just died. Gentlemen. Praise God. He said, one man, a plague hit. I might have been over here in this country, I'm not sure. Here there's a plague. People are dying everywhere. So they used up all the coffins. Then they had people just dead to make the coffins. They couldn't make them fast enough. They started just digging holes and dumping folks in and covering them up. The folks are dying. I'm talking about their situation, positions. Where men stood up and believed God and fought against it and changed the scenery and drove these demons of diseases out from the midst of the people. Amen. That's why you call these people men of God. But if they had to stay up late or stay up all night or whatever they had to do, they fought about it. They fought about it. They stood their ground. They wouldn't give their grounds to the devil. That's the kind of man Paul. He said there was during that plague he was going praise for folks and he would come by down the path that he had to walk to get there. He heard somebody pray. He passed by. Pray. Pray for God to move. Bring to them. 
So he came back late, about dark that evening, that man was still praying. Got up the next morning and headed back down that road, that man was still praying. He come back that evening, and the man was still praying. He said, got up the next morning to head back, praying for folks down in that town. He said, that man was still praying. He said, have we got two brother yet? He said, no, but if I had somebody to help me, I might could get through here. Yeah. Yeah. And he got out and they started praying. He said, the power of God came down after a while. He woke up in the head. Yeah. And settled down on that enough. And said all at once, these demons of that disease showed up. And said, so the altar took them away. And they were doing by fighting. Both of them just fighting. Fighting these evil spirits. Coming out of whatever thing they had. And said all at once, they began to get up with him. They began to cast them spirits out. Begin to drive them evil demons out. And those sicknesses of the devil. Yeah. It's evil spirits. Right. The rest of the cancer, the plagues, yeah. the spirits, that old, that old, uh, I know that thing come out of a, a, a we are in Wuhan, out of China, but there's a spirit in it. There's a spirit in that old cold. And those spirits will manifest themselves. They will show up and see them. And said they begin to drive them spirits out and drove them, drove them until they dis disappeared. And he said the next morning that plague that had covered that whole area, the tithe of the thousand, was completely gone. Thank you, One man stood up and he come in and helped him. He never even mentioned the man's name. How many, how many, you think about how many have stood up for God and war against Satan and brought deliverance whose name was never known and never wrote in the book. Soldiers of Jesus Christ that wasn't looking for their name to be on a sign somewhere. They weren't looking for their name, praise God, to be on a billboard. They were just looking, praise God, hallelujah, bring deliverance to a world that was in trouble to people that the Satan had overrun, had diseased, and they needed help. They weren't looking. They weren't looking. For no prestige. They were just looking. Praise God. They're helpful. Whose names should never be. I thought about in the Bible. What David there spoke about. About this man. Saved the city. Never did mention this man. Praise God. But this man saved the city. His name wasn't even mentioned. Praise God. We've got warriors. We've had great fighters who didn't seek to be a part of the bright lights, but just wanted to help folks. And that's what it's all about. The reward ain't down here. The war, reward down here, what man can give you? Ain't worth a roll pin. But it's the reward of the Lord. It's the reward of eternal life. It's the reward of hearing him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. Come on in. I'll make you rule over me. Oh, what a reward. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. Let's go 1 Timothy, chapter 6. 1 
verse, verse 12. 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and fall after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where to thou art also called. Oh, I'm really glad you've been called to everlasting life. And has professed a good profession before me to witness. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Ephesians 1 and 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Return with me to the book of Second Timothy. Chapter 2. In verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit Die to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You know, the things that God gives us, we have to commit to others, give it to others that they might be able to teach others also. And as the Lord hands down His wisdom and His knowledge, He's still got teachers. And preachers. God can talk to me. Yeah, God can talk to whoever he wants to. But he's still got teachers. Set up in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the same. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come into the unity. Until we all come into the unity of the faith and to the statue and the knowledge. We're headed somewhere, folks. If you're real today, we are headed somewhere. If you love the Lord, your love is true, and you want to go on with the Lord, we're headed somewhere. We're headed somewhere. And the truth will take you into the right direction. You'll know what to do. You'll know what ain't right and what is right. Because the Bible tells you so. It leads us. It guides us. And when the Word of God is preached and taught like it is, you'll know what to do. You won't be left standing on the outside wondering what to do. There'll always be something ahead of you. God is leading you. Every week here, in this church, we God has given us something to lead us on. He's telling us things that we're never left without knowing what to do. The Holy Ghost. This thing is real. It's real. It's real. It's just as real. The Bible is 
real. God's real. God's eternal. Hallelujah. He never leaves us without a witness. David said, Thy word, O God's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Praise God. That word of God will shine. It will shine on your pathway. It will shine around your feet. You will not be left dumbfounded, not knowing what to do. See, we've been taught to the point that we always know to go pray. We always know to go and get the Bible reading and pray and things will clear up. It may be cloudy, but he told us it would be cloudy. It may be rough, but he told us it would be rough. It was rough in Paul's day. But see, we all know, go somewhere and pray. Go somewhere and pray. Get somewhere and get on your knees and read the Bible. And that smoke will clear. That smoke will clear. The rain will cease. The storm will battle now. And you will continue on with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, being a Christian is normal to find hell. But you know, this church world, this it's not normal for them. They get, they get taught. You don't fight. I mean, you're free. Yeah, we're all free. But we're trying. Thomas said the trine of Peter said the trine of your faith is more precious than gold. The trine of your faith is more precious. You know why? Gold won't make you, but trials will. Gold will buy you a new house. Gold will buy you a new house down here. He'll buy you a limousine down here. He'll buy you. Houses and lands. But it won't make you like Jesus. The trial of your faith. When God tests you. When God puts you in the fire. When he tests and tries it. You'll come out, Job said. When I come out of this. I ain't going to be the same old Job. When I come out of this. Something's coming out. I'll be pure gold. He's tried me like gold. He's got me in the fire like gold. When I come out of this, I'll be here go. Thank you, Jesus. We just got to endure. Bible said he can endure it to the end. Same shall be seen. You know, a lot of people, they want God to do some form. They want to be a part of what God's are doing. But they don't want to endure what we have to go through. They get upset. They get mad at folks. They turn on people. When you're being tried, God's trying your attitude. God's trying your attitude. God's trying your attitude. God's trying your faith. God's trying your attitude. See, can you sparkle when you come out? See, you can give God the glory and smile and shake hands with the one that's trying to destroy you and love him. Love your enemy. He's trying your attitude. Somebody's going to have to stand up and be a light of the world. That's what you call a light of the world. That's what you call salt, real salt. Seasoning. It was seasoned. Something you put, you can tell the difference in the taste just because they come in contact with you. Just because, praise God, you're the salt. And this you salt somebody's life and it changes them. You're a light of the world. And that light shines in a dark place. Yeah, a lot of times folks want to do something for God, they want God to do something for them, they want to be a part. But you don't want to endure right. hardness. Right. Bible teaches us to endure hardness. Right. Hard, hard. Right. Fighting hard, ground hard, trying to plow. Yeah. And you plow, you don't want to go to the ground. Trying to preach.
means you can't get that plow on the ground. Gotta turn up the heart. You gotta break up the plow of the ground. You're trying to get the plow on the ground, but the ground's so hard, the plow don't want to go on the ground. It keeps scooping across the top. I've seen ground like that. We plowing that old horse. No ground so hard. You got plow. You got enough over there. Y'all do it. Cut a little old something about like your friend. But it just won't go in that ground so hard. I found this old ground that hard too. Preaching. Just couldn't get that plow to go in the ground. Now I preach seven, eight, nine days. It seems like it get hard every night. Lord, when is this thing going to break? Most of the time it would break. There have been a few times it didn't break. I just said, to come on in. And go to the next place. Man, time I pull that plow out, she sank all the way down out to pick it up. And they were ready for it. You can go right over there. Be hard as a rock. Come right over here. They ready for it. Hallelujah. You can try to win one soul and they'll look at you. Cuss it. I don't want to hear that mess. Go right up to the next door. Knock on it. Tears. Roll that eye. I've been waiting on you. I've been waiting on you. I'm ready to get saved, man. I don't want to go to hell. My mama used to tell me about hell. I don't want to go to hell. I'm ready. See, we got to do a harness. We got to be able. Praise God. When we can't get the plow on the ground, don't let that discourage us. When we can't get the plow to go down in the earth, don't go. Just move on to the next place. Pray for him. Man, I've tried to plow some hard ground. Your mind will blank on you. Get dizzy here. Faith, are you going to pass out? Fighting those evil folks. Just hammer this. Ah! Come down with everything you got. You forget about words. You forget out about what you're saying. You to open your mouth and let anything come out that will come out. Because it's crossway of life. The words turn inside. The devil hitting your word. Cross it up on you. Turn it sideways. But you keep on. You keep on fighting. You come back. What's rough? Go to that and have to come back the next night. Didn't feel the clothes to beat you. Scared the clothes. But God ain't told you the clothes. You got to get back in the ring. And it's toe to toe, lick for lick. He don't go down, he don't go down. That's a bad fight. Yeah. When it's toe to toe, it's boom, 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 boom. You don't look like your legs is stopping it. Like it ain't fading it. But you know what he said? He'll do a hardness. It's a good soul. Hallelujah. We just got to keep fighting. What did Paul say? I read there. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight. That's a good fight. And the good fight is the fight of faith. Keep it on. Going for God. Going back to the pulpit. Going back to your place of ministry. Going back on that street corner. You fall hell and somebody threatened you. Your last time was out there. Come by and wave the gun at you. But you went back because you fell. God wants you to go back. You aren't going to live in fear. Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power and a blow and a sound mind. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Take somebody by the hands and put your war clothes on. Get your car. Get your war clothes on. We're going to make war. We're going to overcome the devil. Hallelujah. We're going to put him down. We're going to overcome him. We're going to have a revival of a huda haku. A huda saha. Glory. Praise him, son.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, I done seen some of these things. See a load of them coming down with the guns sticking up like that. Run, run. These men were Brother Allen's uncles. Man, they load up the Uncle Road, they load up the pick up the me. That gun sticking out the windows. Old loader. On the wall. The mess for one of my children. Coming at you didn't play either. Man, they spread out for the gun. Come in on them. Like a troop. Then he won't apart in my child. Heard y'all six thirty thirties. Three away. Holy Rock. Oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. That's a glory to God. Like a Hatfield and McCoy. One brother out. Of you get all of them, one against you. You mess with one, you got a whole two or three pickup loads coming at you. Oh, Lord. Jesus. They jam you up and cut you off. Lord, have mercy. And he bleed. You want to even hit it, make you want to run. <laughs> and when they're coming at you when you felt like you need to run get on out of the way before the bullets start flying <laughs> what you say Lord help us but he said here into your hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ he's on that battlefield we had to learn to endure hearts. Then we were in, on the war. Up in the mountains. It was cold in the mountains down there to heat to death. We'd be in a foxhole, I remember. Dirk the foxhole. They didn't have no problem out of me. Some of them were a little lazy. After the first far fight, they didn't have no problem out of them either. First thing they want to do is dig a foxhole. Probably before long, the bullets are going to start flying. You land out on top of the ground. Everybody else down in the hole. You're trying to get in somebody's the hole. They said, get out of here. I ain't got room for you here. No, no. I know you've got to prepare. you got to get out there and do what you got to do. We're on the battlefield here, folks. We're in a war. you got to get your foxhole. The first thing you do, no matter how tired you are, how hungry you are, First thing you don't you don't do is eat. First thing you don't do is lay down and get a nap. First thing you do is dig a hole. Get your head down, your body under the ground. Probably in a few minutes, they found out you were there. They were coming. And there'd be a firefight. There'd be a battle. So you have to learn to get your heart to be cold. And I'll start raining. Fill up the foxhole with water. But ain't nobody going to get out. Gotta ease up, get a little relief. Here's something to push that down that water. Kind of dip it out, it raining so hard. Kind of dip it out with that little cup you got. Give yourself a little some relief. You hear them cups that water. But you have to learn to do hard. You couldn't just get up, slam your head down, and say, I'm going to the house. I'm quick. Man, I ain't going through this mess. Down that foxhole. It raining. If hot soul don't fill up with water, and they start shooting, your head's got to go down. Where you going to go? You going to dip out enough, or you get your head down without drowning. So you have to learn to survive. You have to learn to do a hardness. It helps you along your life. Going through those things that teaches you how to do a hardness. You never say quit. Never say I can't do it. Because you know what the old saying, quit never did finish nothing. 
I said, oh, quit. Never did get nothing done. He always stopped before he got it done. Come on. But the things you have to do on the battlefield, it taught you. So he said, here, Paul, endure. endure. It's going to be hard being a soldier of Jesus Christ. Get in there and endure. You're going to fight. You're going to have battles. You're going to be persecuted. Some of it be whooped. Paul was whipped with a whip. Five times. Forty stripes, say one. Thirty-nine stripes and a whoop. They didn't play back then. You cutting down in your high. You're gonna preach, Paul. Yes, I'm gonna preach. You're gonna still go preach? Yes, I'm gonna preach. Yeah. You ain't got some endurance. You said, no, sir. I give it up. I got to be whooped like this. I ain't preaching. To me. God can't protect me. God could have protected him. Jesus said I could call 12 leaves of angels take myself off the cross. But where would we be today if he had done it? Who would Paul have been if he had done it? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. You can deliver yourself. Jesus had the freedom to deliver himself. You know what, when, you, when, you, when you're out there, you got your back against the wall, they said, deny Jesus, you can deliver yourself if you want. Oh, Lord. Won't you be lost? They got your back against the wall, they got a high power rifle. Ten of them go shoot at the same time where nobody knows. Who killed them? Well, all of them had a real bullet. Nobody knows. You're there with that price. You can deliver yourself. All you got to do. It's just like Papa, not just Papa. He's dead. Say 13 years of communist prison. He said, they come and ask him, Are you ready to deny Jesus? Well, let's out. It's in your home. If you're bath and you're sure closed, nobody's going He could deliver, pop off, could have delivered himself and not stayed in that rat intestine. And they was in a hole with lead over it and use the bathroom, eat what they ate, what they gave them in the same hole. And that won't break you. break Ain't nothing got a room to breathe or they don't use that. In a little hole. Yeah, he said they put the rifle behind his ear. He said he'd feel a sigh of relief. He said, oh, just a minute, a second or two, I'll be with Jesus now. He welcomed death. It was so awful. He said, I welcome death. No, you know when it's so horrible. He said, you welcome death. That's right. That's hard. That's right. That's right. And it was all because he didn't do nothing wrong. He preached Jesus. He was a pastor. He was a pastor. And he preached Jesus. And those that put your back against the wall, only the real will stand. Amen. Amen. It's about like that in, over there, not Romania. No, the beast, that's what it would be. It is. Two soldiers coming in. He said, We're giving y'all. You don't deny Jesus and leave, we're going to kill all of y'all. He said, We're giving y'all 30 seconds to get out of here. You're going to deny Jesus and leave, don't we? We'll kill the whole bunch. He said, Nah! He said, They're running on top of each other, getting out of here. They boom! And one but a handful left. They locked the door and leave the rifles over the corner and said, We Christians too. 
we just get rid of him. We need to have to.
he not crowned except he's kind of lost. Got dirt bodies. Got to stay in the mountains. You got to strive lawfully. You got to do it according to God's word. You just can't whip a wobble and get all out of bounds and down and up and out the road and back in the road. No, you got to stay in the road. You got to strive lawfully. You know, there's rules. You go down here, you're running a race. There's rules. You can't just get two or three feet ahead, cross the line, and take off running. You got to jump on it. You're lost before you start. You can have one toe across the line. They run that tape, camera back, they check your feet. You may be outrun everybody a good distance on the track, but because you had a toe across the line, you were disqualified. Come on. Oh, how I many you don't want to be disqualified? You don't want to run and run and run and get there. You're disqualified because you didn't do it lawfully according to the Word of God. A lot of people do it if they can do it without God's Word. Because there's no price without God's Word. You don't have to do it right without God's Word. But God's Word teaches us to stay in bound. Stay in bound. Do it lawfully. Do it according to God's Word. The husband man that labored must be first partake of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even under bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I do all things for the elect's sake. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Amen. You die out with him. Now to sin in the world, you live with him. You suffer. We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shone profane and vain badly, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth the canker, who is Hymenus and Fulfilius, who have concerned the truth of error, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrown the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure having this seal, the Lord knoweth, and that it is. And let it one that name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Can you say that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians 6. Or 2 Corinthians 6, excuse me. 2 Corinthians 6. You got it saved again. We then as workers together with him beseech you that also you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he says, I've heard being in time accepted 
and the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the receipt, except the time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. You start giving offense because you're going through something. The ministry will wind up getting the blunt of it. Amen. Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions and necessities, need and stuff, out there on the field, ain't got what you need. Don't have gas money to get. Well, why would God allow you to go through if He wants you to go somewhere? Paul said, I was in necessities. I didn't have what I needed. God was proving, making, making him a vessel strong, making him endure hardness as a good soul. In distress. Well, we can stop right there. Just feel that old distress. Just fighting the devil. Spirit's coming in. But Paul said distress is Paul was distressed. Necessities. In stripes. It was beat. Still had to stand up. Still had to be a good soldier with his back bleeding. In imprisonment, thrown in jail, in humility, I and mean, in turbulence, troubles at work, in labors. He had to get out there and work with his own hands. Report himself. Made tense in watching. And on top of that, watching and fasting, watching and praying. In a full, full time job, did By periods. By knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness. Got to be kind. No matter how much pressure you're under. By the Holy Ghost, by love and friends, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good reports. He went through it all. He's telling us you're going to go through it all. You'll have evil report. You'll have good report. If honor, you'll have dishonor. As deceivers and yet true. People calling you a deceiver, but you are telling the truth. People calling you a false prophet, but you ain't told nothing but the truth. Paul said, I went through all this. I'm talking about the day enduring harvest. As a good soldier. Yeah. No man that war changes himself with the fairies of his life. And they please him. Call him the real soldier. As unknown and yet well known. Devil knew he was and nobody else. By dying, as dying, and behold, we live. As dying, selling out, dying out of the flesh. Just like a dead man in a coffin. You're dead to the world. As dying, but yet we live. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. In other words, I'm dead with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. It's not how they live, it's Christ now. This old man is dead. Old Paul is gone. As unknown, well known, as dying, but behold, I live. we live as chastened and not killed. Whoop. I still live close to death, but I ain't dead. As sorrowful, but it always rejoices. 
In other words, you look at him, he looks like he goes on to have the person in the world, but in his heart, he's leaving. He's rejoicing. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord. As poor, <laughs> but making many rich. He's talking about making them rich in God. Making them rich in the Word. As poor, but yet I'm making folks rich with this Word of God. They're becoming rich, millionaires. In the Spirit. Follow the Holy Ghost. Follow faith. Has had been nothing. <laughs> Stripped. They got a dime a pocket to get possession on. Is having nothing yet possessing all. Man, you think that rascal is rich? He ain't got a dime in his pocket. Have you ever seen that kind of person? You think, man, he's rich. He hits out there. This man one time got a taxi, bring him all the way from Mobile on the Wilson. Mm -hmm. Stopped in front of a rich man's house and mansion. Told him, let me run in here and get his money. He ran in, went inside the man's house, went on around, went home. That taxi stayed out there, blow, blow. They had to come out there and run him off. He did it one time, run. Our house one time. Taxi brought him all the way from Mobile. Somebody said, that's it, that's it, bro, 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 Lift your hands and say, God, I want to be one of them soldiers. 
the glory. Oh, I want to be one of the God, I want to be one of the Thank you, Jesus. Just reach over, join hands with somebody. We're going to try to get up to the camp meeting. Join hands with somebody and pray for them. Pray for them that God there be one of the souls. Lord, make us soldiers. Make us, let us endure the heart as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Why did you pray? Pray for Brother Barnhill. He's been preaching this morning and passed out in the pulpit. I don't know just what's all wrong. Whatever it is, God can take care of it. God, we pray today. We pray, Lord. God, we call upon you. We ask you, Lord, to move. Oh, Jesus, let us be those soldiers like Paul. Lord, has been poor, but yet making many rich. Didn't have no money. Didn't have no gold or silver. Peter said, silver gold, have I none, but such as I do have. If I'm to be. Lord, them apostles had something. They weren't rich. They didn't have no gold or silver, but they had a miracle. God, that's what most important thing. Then powerhouse. Men of faith and powerhouse for God didn't have a dime. Oh, Lord, preachers were pretty now. They quit. They didn't have a dime. They were quit. They wouldn't get a bunch of money. Lord, they wouldn't preach. Lord, Peter didn't have no silver or gold, but he had a miracle. Lord, that's what the world needs. They need a miracle. God, help us all to fall and endure hardness. Lord, Peter endured hardness. Lord, there was enduring hardness. Paul was enduring hardness, being beaten, strong. Left for dead. Lord, he fought all the way through. It ain't about what we got, what we drive, or what we fly. Lord, I know that's sick to you. That's sick. Lord, it's about the power like Peter had. Said, what gold have I not? But such as I have, give unto me. Lord, that's what we need. We need the power. We need the miracles, signs, and wonders. Restore us back, Lord. God, give us back what the devil has stolen from us. Make us good soldiers of Jesus Christ. God, help us to be willing to endure hard as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, come on and tell him you love. Tell him you love. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, I can face. Because Jesus lives, I don't have to quit and go on. All fear is gone. Because I know, yes, I know, He holds our future. He's got it all in His hand. My life is worth a living just because He lives. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to change the order of the service. Give you a chance to prepare to get up to the camp meeting. I appreciate the Lord. I appreciate His presence. And we fell here today. There were so many folks that got this short. They're giving it up. They're not fighting. They're not going on. Lord, give us grace. Give us mercy. But your old Paul was a man that went on. He endured the heart. He endured the battle. And they put him to the beating. 
put him in jail. He get out and preach again. You know, I kept him. That was a light. That was a light to me. You read about what Paul went through. It encourages you to go on with God. Amen. We're going to give you a chance to bring your tithes and offerings. Just lift your hands to him. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to give you a chance to bring your best to the Lord today. Your tithes and offerings. God bless you. Just put your hands one more time and say, Lord, I want to be a soldier. Lord, I want to be a soldier. That will endure a hardness. A good soldier. God can trust. So let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable to thy sight. For Lord, my strength. Now there won't be more service here Tuesday night. We'll be up to 10. We'll be back here. Next Sunday afternoon, God bless